All right, kids, here we go. Part two of the unit three review or unit three discussion notes starts like this. Before we talked about the atom and what makes up the atom, now we're going to specifically talk about the electron. So where it is, how to locate it, things like that. And the big term that comes into play here is called electron configuration. All right. So when you look at the periodic table, it roughly looks like this. All right. It kind of has that setup. It kind of has that shape to it. Some vary a little bit, but this is the general form. All right. So there's different blocks or different areas on the periodic table. And the first one is called the S block. All right. The S block is located right here. These two tall columns. All right. This is the S block. All right. The S block can have a maximum of two electrons. Max. All right. So there's your first block. It's called the S block. <coughs> Second block is the other tall columns, which would be all of these. This is your P block. Okay. The P block can have a maximum of six electrons. All right, so we got an S, we got our P block, and then we have our D block, which is this middle area here. This is the D block. The D block can have a maximum of 10 electrons. And the last block, which is the only block that's left, and it's this whole area down here, this is the F block. The F block can have a maximum of 14 electrons. All right, so now there's different blocks, and what you do is in each block, you count. All right, so you count, so, and then when you want to find a certain element, you count your way through the periodic table from top, from left to right, top to bottom. All right. So there's different areas where electrons can be, the S block, the D block, the P block, and the F block. Some are inner level electrons, in other words, they're close to the nucleus, and some are outer level electrons, which are called valence electrons. The inner level electrons are going to be in your D and F blocks. The outer level are going to be in your S and P blocks. All right. <coughs> so here's how it kind of works out. You're going to need your periodic table or a periodic table. I gave you guys this one, and it should help out a little bit. All right. So kind of looking at your notes and looking at the periodic table, let's do two of them to see if you kind of catch on. We'll do more in class, but this is just more of a guide. All right. So here's how it works out. Let's find, uh, where are we at here? Gold. Okay, we'll find gold first. So gold. Gold is right here. Way down here, all right? So now, if I look at my shape, here's my S blocks. Here's my D block. Here's my P block right here. And here's my F block on the bottom. So I got to go all the way through these elements until I get to this. So here's the first one in the S. This is 1S1, okay? Helium is 1S2, all right? Because technically there's only two of them in here, and it's only S blocks. So it's 1S1, 1S2. Once you end the row, you change it. Now, because we're in the second row, now we're going to go 2S. 2S1, 2S2. There's no Ds, so then you go... 2p1, 2p2, 2p3, 2p4, 2p5, 2p6. All right. 3s1, 3s2, 3p1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 4s1, 4s2. And then when we get to the d block, what happens is Whatever row you're in, you go back one because they're inner level electrons. So this is 3D1, 3D2, 3D3, 3D4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And now because we go back to the P block, now we go back to the regular row number, 4P1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 5S1, 5S2. Now we go back a row because we're in D, 4D1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now we go back to the five P's, five P1, two, three, four, five, six, six S1, six S2. Now this group, if you notice, this is this whole row down here, which you have to go through. These are your F's. 
And when you're S, you go back two from whatever row you're in. So if I'm in row six, I go to four. So this is going to be 4F1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Because remember, you can only have 14 maximum in the F row. And this uh, luteum would be your first D. So this would be 5D1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So 5D9 is my last number I write. And you don't write every number. You summarize the rows. All right? So. First row, 4s1, 4s2, um, 1s1, 1s2. So I write down here. Hope you can kind of see that. There we go. So I summarize that first row, 1s2. First row, s block, two electrons. Now I do my second row, 2s1, 2s2. Summarize it. Get to the end of the block, 2s2. Then I go to my p block. Still in the second row, 2P, and I went all the way across it, and there's six of them, 2P, six. Second row, P block, six electrons. Third row, 3S2, that'll take me to magnesium. You guys can see that there. That'll take me to magnesium, right here. Then I go 3P, six, that'll take me through aluminum to argon. 4s2, that'll take me to calcium. 3d10, that takes me through this middle area, which is called the transition metals, all the way to zinc. Um, 4p6, that'll take me to krypton. 5s, this is going to be a long one. 5s2, takes me to strontium. Then we go. 4D10 takes me all the way to cadmium. 5P6 takes me to where are we at? 5P6 takes me to xenon. Then I'll start another row. 6S2 takes me to barium. Then I go through my Fs. Remember, drop back to 4F14 takes me to iterum from lanthium to iterum. Ludium is technically my first D, so it's going to be 5D, let's see, 5D1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 5D, 9. All right, now that's the longhand version. The shorthand version is like this. You start from the previous row, say, if gold is in the sixth row, I go up to the fifth row, go to the last one, and I bracket that, and I say, well, I start at XE, and then I just continue from that six rows. So and I go 6S2, 4F14, 5D9. So there's two ways to do it. There's a longhand version and the shorthand version. All right. When you get to the end of a row, you summarize it. Once you get to that element, you stop at that number, and that's what you write down for your final number. So you don't write every one down. You summarize each row up. So let's try another one. Let's try calcium. All right, so calcium is right here. Not going to be as long. So it ends, it's in the S block, ends 4S2. So I have to write everything that's above that 4S2. And remember, this is going to be difficult. It's probably going to be the harder ones things we're going to do. So let's do that one. So let's check out calcium here. Let's see if we can get it on the page, make it work. Let's zoom out a little bit. Perfect. Okay, so there's calcium right here. All right, so calcium, hydrogen's 1s1, helium's 2s2, end of the row, write it down. So it's, whoops, 1s2. All right, go to the second row, 2s1, 2s2, summarize, the, summarize that block, 2s2, 2p's, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, I got to the end of the row, 2p6. Then I go 3s, 3s2, takes me to magnesium. 3P6 takes me to argon. And then there's calcium. It's at the end of the S, so it's 4S2. Shorthand version. I write down the last one from the previous row that calcium's in. So calcium's in the fourth row. I look up here. Argon's in the third row. So I go argon, and I go 4S2.
All right. Now, what's going to happen when elements want to bond and they get excited and they jump? What happens is these electrons will jump energy levels. It's like one will go up from the th one will go from the three to say like the fourth or the fifth or the sixth. So how can you identify a ground state atom? These are all ground states because they're all the electrons are where they should be. If there's extra electrons in a level above, that means it's excited. So <coughs> basically, you can tell an excited electron because they have extra electrons in a higher energy level. Okay, so when I say higher energy level, I'm talking about these threes, fours, twos, okay? So this one, two, three, fours, those are your rows or your energy levels. The S, the P's, the D's, and the F's, those are your, those are your blocks. And then the exponent above it, those are your number of electrons per block. All right? And remember, there's limits to how many each block can hold, which are right up here. All right, we'll do a lot more in class, but this is kind of a general view of electron configuration. Hope this helps. I'll probably put another video or put an additional video that goes with this. Hope you have a good day. Bye.